All right. Um, can, can you guys hear me? Let's do a small sanity test with uh, the with the technicals and then we'll start. So, can anyone hear me? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, a few logistics out of the way. Cool. Um, so I guess uh, I'm hearing some echo here. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so let's. Uh, so for today's session and uh, for this whole month, uh, we'll be exploring a different concept, uh, which is basically, uh, we call it as counting. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, we'll do that shortly. Uh, we'll just get the homework out of the way. Um, and for the rest of the lessons in this month, we will be, doing some counting exercises. So that's another theme in King and Pawn and Games. And uh, we'll be exploring that for the rest of the month. Uh, however, for today's lesson, uh, I've got some feedback that uh, you guys would be uh, uh, would like uh, some sort of variety in our lessons. And um, so taking that into account, what I've uh, decided is that uh, today we'll, We'll, we'll uh, go through game and we'll do a little bit of openings and openings in the sense that uh, we'll, uh, we'll basically tie uh, the study of end games back to the openings, you know, like so how certain end games affect the decisions that are uh, that gate uh, that affect the decisions by the players in the openings. So uh, we'll go through that game today. And uh, before we do that, uh, let's just uh, get the homework positions out of the way, and uh, then then we'll start with the uh, then we'll start with the opening and end game uh, whole game. Okay, so how many of you uh, did get a chance to do the uh, homework? Any of you? None of you. Um, all right, so let's uh, do it to the, uh, let's do it now, but uh, not spend too much time on it because uh, uh, studying the whole game from opening to end game will will take a big chunk of our time. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on the homework positions. So this is the first homework position uh, that. Uh, uh, that I shared in an email last week. Uh, this position was, I believe, black to play. Um, and again, uh, uh, we are just using uh, the concepts we learned in the, in, the, in the first and second lesson of this series, the fifth and sixth rank positions. And this is just a sort of a variation of that. Uh, this does uh, expand on the concept of distant opposition. Uh, so, well, we'll also uh, get to see that uh, in this homework position. So black to play, um, what do you guys think? What will uh, say, so this is black's turn to play. What do you think uh, black should play here? E7. King E7, okay. So King E7, then I play King E5. Mm. Go on. Then F7. Then I take king into F5. And then G7. Uh, king G7 and King G5. And uh, this is the fifth rank position. And basically white has the opposition here. Um, uh, actually, well, white is winning here. Oh. Right. Um, the, the, the reason for that is white also has an extra tempo. So 
blacklist king f7, then I first go king h6, king f6, and g4, and my pawn eventually quits, right? So, white's pawn quits eventually. Um, so, from the starting position, uh, it's it's sort of obvious that black is uh, is, is not going uh, will have problems defending the pawn. Say king e7, king e5. If you play king f7, he takes king into f5. But say if he plays king f8, you know, like a trick we saw in in um, you know earlier lessons, like trying to wait until he captures the pawn. So white captures the pawn. Then I play king f7. Uh, do, you, uh, do you do you guys think this is a draw or white is still winning? White wins. White wins, right? So you play king g5, king g7, and then I break the opposition with g4. And now again, it's black's turn to play, right? So because white has that waiting move, uh, uh, he is able to break the opposition. He's, he's able to pass on the move to black, and then we get the fifth rank position with, with black to play. So the, this move is the key, actually. So um, let me just say here, that uh, g4, control out, okay. So white wins because he has a reserve pawn move, right? So if the pawn was already on g4, then white couldn't have passed on the move to black. So because he has this uh, critical move, uh, he's able to pass on the move black um, and that's what uh, actually drives uh, black's solution here so black's first move is very cunning uh, what it does is that he first plays f4 so he voluntarily gives up the pawn obviously uh, white takes it and now what do you think black should play e7 so if plays king e7, I play king e5. Mm -hmm. If he plays, if you play king f7, then I play king f5. And again, we are in the same position, the fifth rank position with black to play. So black, uh, ideally black wants to bring this exact position with white to play, right? So if, if this position is black to play, white wins, right? So this position with black to play, white wins. Right, so this is the rank position, and uh, white to play. This is the draw. It's a draw. So black has to uh, calculate on on how to bring this position, this particular position, uh, with uh, with white to play. And so, hang on, I will just uh, do some annotations here. Annotate. Uh, do. Oops. Oh, spotlight stamp. Draw. Okay. Yeah. So this position, okay, this position, you have to bring with white to play, and that's what uh, blacks. That's what will try black solutions. So. Let's go back a little bit. So king e7 doesn't work, but what black plays here is king e8. Again, this is, this is a very good move. And the reasoning is that if white plays king e5 now, then I play king e7. And we are entering the fifth rank position with, with white to play. So if I play king e5, then king f7. If you play f5, then, sorry. If you push the pawn, then white really doesn't get the uh, fifth rank. Uh, the fifth rank position is no no, uh, no longer possible. So black just plays king f7, f6. And what will black play here now after f6? f8. King f8, right? And, and we all know that this is a draw. King e8, king e6, f7, king f8, king f6. Stick, right? So uh, you basically are bringing the position with opposition. So king e8, exclamation. 
So white also tries the same trick. He plays king e4. Now what do you think black's move should be? I'm sorry? Uh, did someone say anything? Black to play? Uh, please unmute yourself. Um, so if, if black plays king f7 here, then white plays king f5. And again, white wins here because this is black to play. Right, so if you bring this position with black to play, uh, white is going to win. But black makes another waiting move with king f8. And again, this is a very good move. And what black is doing here is that he's using the concept of distant opposition. So now there are two variations. If, if white plays king f5, then I play king f7, and it's a draw. If white plays king e5, then I play king e7, and again, it's a draw. If you play f5, then I just play king f7 and e5, king e7, f6, king f7. We all know this is a draw. If you have any doubts, uh, go back and refer to, to our second lesson, uh, the, the recording of our second lesson on the YouTube channel uh, to expound on this, why this position is a draw. If, if you still have doubts, but if you don't, then it's fine. Uh, but I guess this is clear that the sense in a draw. So Black's uh, solution is really tricky. You know, like he gives the pawn with f4 and, and, and he basically gets rid of that tempo. You know, the tempo in the other line where White was able to play g4 and break the opposition. He got rid of that tempo by sacrificing his pawn, and then he goes for the distant opposition. And he practically forces White to to uh, to come to that fifth rank position with his turn to play. E8, E4, King F8, and now White really cannot avoid the draw anymore. Uh, no chances to trick him. All right, so. Um, uh, any questions on this? All right, I'm gonna assume no questions. If you have any questions, uh, just reach out to me offline. Uh, you have my email address, but um, I'm gonna assume there are no questions. I guess uh, this is this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, if you if you are if if your foundations. If your basic knowledge of the uh, fifth and sixth, sixth rank positions is solid, then this uh, solution should be easy to grasp. If you're having, if you still are having trouble with the fifth and sixth rank positions, if you don't understand why this is a draw, I would highly, uh, I would strongly advise you to go and uh, look at, uh, look back the videos of first and uh, second lesson videos. Okay. Um, so let's move to the second uh, homework position. Okay. So did anybody get chance to look at this position? Study this position. Anyone? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, who is this? Arna. Arna, okay. So this position is white to play. And again, uh, I'll, I'll uh, repeat myself. Like if you, uh, if, if you guys want, uh, the, our, our lessons to be much speedier, you know, like if you want me to cover more material, it is highly important that you do the homeworks that are assigned to you. You, you work on those positions so that uh, we can save some time during our, uh, during our actual interaction. Okay, Arnav, so why to play? What do you think? Uh, what I got, 
King C2. King C2, okay. Um, so King C2, let's say I play King D6. Um, King D3. King D3, then I play King E5. Um, pawn F6. Pawn F6, then I will take King, King takes F6. So uh, th this is a very interesting move, pawn f6. Uh, so say I play g into f6. Um, what do you have in mind? King e3. King e3, then I play king f5. King f3. King f3, and what do you think is the evaluation? It's gonna be a draw. It's going to be a draw, right? So it's, it's, it's basically the same fifth rank position. In, in this case, this is fourth rank for black. But uh, the idea is that uh, black is not able to get a breakthrough, right? So it's not able to get a breakthrough or, 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 a, or a bypass because it's his turn to play. So wherever he goes, white king just follows him. King f5, white king just follows him, and he's not able to come forward, right? And then he has to move his pawn, after which this is a draw. We just stay in front of the pawn and uh, it's, it's a draw, right? So it, that's good, right? Uh, so good job there. So F6 is a really interesting move. Uh, it's a very interesting move. I like it. I like the concept behind it. So why did you think of F6? Some, some thoughts there? I wanted to position myself for the sixth rank. Right, right. Yeah, okay. Yes, uh, correct. So if if the black pawn takes, then you basically get the fifth rank position and, and avoid uh, getting the sixth rank position, right? So F6 is a very interesting move. I like it. But the only flaw is that if black takes with the pawn, then white has a draw, right? So, so taking with the pawn is a mistake for black. Uh, he can, however, take with the king. Mm. White and, uh, and then uh, white really has no, I mean, if king e4, what do you think black will play here? King e6. King e6? If you play king e6, <laughs> yes, you can play king e6, but that is sort of a better move here. Much more obvious move. Pawn G6. Pawn G6 would be uh, a mistake, actually. If you play pawn G6, uh, then king F4, and this is a draw. G6 is a mistake. Mm -hmm. So ideally, uh, what are we looking for here? So what is black's winning plan? Pawn G5. Uh, that's the move. Uh, you know, like So in terms of, uh, of plan strategy, what uh, what is black trying to do here? Pawn G six. I'm not speaking about the moves, uh, the strategy, the plan. He's trying to queen his pawn. He's trying to queen his pawn, right? So let's uh, establish the objective. He wants to queen his pawn. Okay. So before uh, we start thinking about the moves, uh, the strategy should be clear. He's trying to queen his pawn, and if he tries to just push his pawn, what's going to happen? Oh. So say you're just gonna push the pawn by clicking F3, he pushes the pawn, you know, like without the without the black king, what will happen if black just pushes his pawn? He's gonna, He's gonna lose it, right? So just pushing his pawn on his own is not the great idea. And uh, one of the things we looked at in our first few lessons is that the pawn needs the assistance. Whose assistance? The does king. it mean king. the king, right? So the king has to be forward. The king has to be in front of the pawn to guide it. So pushing the pawn uh, is um, uh, is not the best solution here. You know, like so the the king is like uh, is is guiding the pawn to its queening square. Think of the king, and then what's the queening square? So let me figure him. This is the queening square. So the king ideally has to start controlling all these squares you know like the, the king has to help the pawn go through all these squares so king e6 i guess it works uh but it's not really 
uh, following the plan of of controlling the of uh, you know like of guiding the black pawn. Actually, uh, you know, like a very simple answer is King G five, right? So the what the black king is doing is that he's controlling the squares uh, where the black pawn will need protection. So King F three, I play King H four. If he plays King F four, then I play G five, right? I mean, that's the algorithm here. The king should be. Uh, controlling the squares uh, or the path of the pawn. And like, so on every step the pawn makes forward, the, the king should help it. King F2, then I play G4. And then if you place King G1, now it really doesn't matter because the sixth rank position, right? So um, that's the algorithm here. Uh, you, should, uh, you should think about the objective, you know, like, what is that that black is trying to do and and then start calculating the moves um so i guess from that perspective king g5 makes sense king f3 king h4 if you place king g2 you uh now g5 now uh, uh, here is where the calculation part comes in after king g2 what do you think of the move g5 is this a correct move or not No. Why not? What move will white play here? H2. King H2. And if I play King G4? King G2, right? And again, we are entering the fifth rank position. So this is the, this is the fifth rank position with white to play, no, but black to play, and so it's a draw. Right, so uh, there are certain tactical things that you have to keep in mind. So G5 would be an obvious mistake here. You can first play King G4, and you know, like just try taking up space. King H2, then play King F3, and now already you're controlling a lot of squares. Are controlling these three squares and the pawn is guaranteed to come to g5 right they should win so calculation is necessary but it all it, it should be guided by the overall objective the overall strategy and that's how uh the the combination of uh, of identifying the uh the strategy and doing the calculations will lead to finding the correct moves or will lead to finding the best and good moves. Um, okay. So, okay, we, we have digressed a little bit. So after F6, king into F6, black wins. Okay, so that much we know. So F6 really doesn't work. And after king E5, is there any other option for white? White to play, uh, or or is white lost here? Yeah, guys. Uh, so I mean, um, as we have done uh, in our uh, lessons, that we calculate, and then if we think that we are at a good, good, good stopping point for a given variation, then we want to establish an evaluation if that position is winning, or if it's a draw, or if it's losing. So. What do you think uh, the evaluation of this variation is? After King E5, can we establish a very uh, concrete evaluation? Is there a defense for white? No. Um, yeah, so I will I will agree with that. After King E5, White pretty much has no defense. F6 doesn't work. So if I play King E3, King into F5, 
king f3, king g5, king g3, and now I break the opposition with g6. But again, black has this reserve move of g6, and black wins here. So, whatever white kings go, black's king enters one side of the other, right? So, king h3, king f4, king f3, king h4, and black is again able to queen his pawn. Okay, so um, king c2, king d6, king d3. So after king d3, king e5, black is winning. And that's why I don't think king d3 works. So is there a uh, uh, alternative that white can think on instead of king d3? D2. Yeah, okay, so if you place d2, um, e5. Just make this. Sorry, king, e, king d2, king e5. And again, you run into the same problem, right? So if you play king e3, this is the same variation, king f3, king, so king g5, king g3, g6. And uh, yeah, king e5, if you play king e3, if f6, then again, king, king and f6, and black again wins here. So uh, the more is critical here. Um, let me just assign an evaluation here, black wins. So uh, these are interesting moves, but the more is important here. So the white first place f6 here. It takes away the king into f6 part. So black does not have the option of taking king into f6. So black's move is pretty much forced, right? He has to take g into f6, what now? What will white play now? D2. D2, right, exactly. So king G2. So just to digress a little bit, uh, is king D3? A good move? Uh, why not? Because then king to d5. King to d5, right. And that's how black punishes white's mistake. And then king e3, king e5, king f3, king f5. And now black gets to control, starts controlling the squares of this pawn, right? So he either gets, either gets to e4 or g4, depending on where black, on depending on where white's king goes. So white wins here. So king d3 is a mistake here, sorry. But king d2 is a good move. Uh, and now this position is starting to look very similar to the first homework position, right? So what if I play king e5? King to e3. King to e3, if I play king f5? King to f3. And what's your evaluation? Black win or draw? Draw. Draw, right, yeah. So this is, again, the fifth rank position with black to play. Whatever black king goes, white king follows him and black cannot make any progress. So king e5 goes to a draw. What if I play king e6? King e6. King e6. White to play. Anyone? It's very similar to 
our homework number. Is it black to play? It's white to play. White, black just split king e6. White to play. E2? E2, e two, right? Yeah. And then if I play king f5, then again king f3. So yeah, this uh, this is the concept of uh, distant opposition. Sorry. So uh, there are three squares in between. In opposition, you have one square in between. In distant, you have three squares in between. And yeah, after king f3, it's, it's a draw. So again, I mean, uh, uh, the, the uh, calculation part plays a major uh, role in this uh, in this uh, puzzle, uh, and uh, and more importantly, the more when to sacrifice the pawn, right? So if you uh, let's just go from the top. So king c2, king d6. If you first bring your king with uh, with king d3 or king d2, then black gets king e5, and then sacrificing the pawn doesn't work because he can take with his king, and uh, Contrary to that, if you sacrifice on the first move, right? So let's say instead of king c2, you play f6 on the first move, and the problem is that black takes it, king c2, and now black has this square available. So now he plays king e6, king d3, king f5, king e3, king g4. So, and Again, black wins here. So the more is very critical to uh, in in this position when to sacrifice the pawn. The first, if you, if you sacrifice the pawn on the first move, uh, black gets this path to come uh, from king e6 f5 to g4, and then he's already uh, on his way to uh, pushing his pawn uh, towards the queening square. He's controlling the right squares. And if you push it uh, one move later, like say on the third move with f6, then black takes with his king. Right. So that also doesn't work. So move order is critical, and uh, I'll just mention it here as a reminder of move order is critical. And uh, in identifying the solution of this puzzle. Right, so you, you have to give up the pawn at the right movement. So just put it here, two exclamations. I really like this move. King c2, king d6, and now f6. Takes king d2. King e6, king e2. Yeah, again, this is a good move. King f5, king f3, draw. Cool. Any any questions? All right. So I'm going to assume no questions. Just save this for later. And uh, let's start with the uh, with the openings. Not really opening, but uh, as I said earlier, that. Uh, we'll be actually studying an end game, but tying it back to uh, tying it back to the opening. You know, like how the study of the end game influenced uh, influences the decisions of the players. So this is a great game between two grandmasters, and uh, the, the uh, uh, the important part about this uh, game is that uh, the white player. Uh, had a position in his mind, had an end game position in his mind, and that's why he pursued a particular line right out of the opening. He aimed for that end game, and uh, he got that end game because he thought it was uh, it was winning for him. Albeit the end game was a bit complicated. Uh, okay, so let's go there. Let's do a new share. Okay, cool. 
Um, again, I will repeat uh, that uh, I will I will highly recommend you guys uh, going through the uh, the homework positions. You know, like we we meet uh, one hour per week, um, and then uh, there is some homework. That homework should take another hour. And I think two hours of chess per week is is uh, is like the bare minimum uh, that we should. Uh, try to strive for uh, because without that I don't think uh, you guys can really hope for meaningful progress uh, so it's uh, so try to do the homeworks uh, try to uh, look at the solutions uh, the goal is not for you to find the solutions the goal for you is to think on the positions so what we are doing in this class is that we are building your calculation skills this is not strictly a transfer of information uh, because I don't think uh, you require, you, you really require a coach for telling you uh, a bunch of information. Um, you have Google for that. You can just do search queries and, and find information. What a coach is supposed to do is that he's supposed to build a good skill set and uh, build, a, build a foundation. And uh, that's what. Uh, I will be striving in this, uh, striving in these lessons, and so uh, just uh, doing the homeworks is is, is the bare minimum uh, for us to keep the performance of these sessions uh, at a good level. So again, uh, do the homeworks. Try doing them. It's all right if you don't come up with the right answers, but I want you guys to think. Use your muscle, your brain muscle. It's important. All right, uh, so let's start uh, with this game. Uh, this, uh, uh, the opening was a uh, dragon, a uh, Sicilian dragon. Uh, I hope you guys are so familiar with it somewhat. Uh, we'll not be studying the opening in detail. Uh, the goal is just to tie the opening back to the end game. And that's what we'll be doing here. We'll start for C5, knight of three, D6. D4, CD4, ND4, not F6, Knight C3, G6. All right, so this is the dragon variation. Uh, typical Sozin response with Bishop C4, Bishop G7, Bishop B3. Damn it. Uh, castles, F3. Knight c6, bishop e3, knight into d4, bishop into g4. So this is all pretty standard, right? So this is uh, one of the side variations of dragon. And uh, people are just, both white and black are following a very standard plan. Um, I will just add that there are a lot of variations. Um, uh, in this position, you know, like queen a5, bishop e6. Black could have also avoided playing, uh, taking knight into d4. There is another plan with knight e5, bishop d7, rook c8, knight c4. Um, I'll say that uh, we, we will be doing all the stuff, but not right yet. Uh, uh, we'll be straight going to the end game phase. Queen d2, bishop e6. On castle. Um, B5, right? So uh, players are castle on opposite sides. The uh, white skin is on queen side, black skin is on king side. Opposite side castling, so you want to attack your opponent's king. Black pushes with B5. Uh, white does a prophylactic move with king B1. C8. And catch you one. So okay, White's plan is not to push his pawns with g4, h4, but rather he wants to play in the center. So he's aiming for the e5 break at some point. Take, take, four, ninety-five. Uh, white is attacking both e7 and f6. 
So either I will take on E sun or fra fracture your own structure on F6 after which D6 will become weak. Um, so take, take bishop into G7. And now black blade knight C3 check. This is a very interesting move. Uh, the reason is that if black plays king into g7, then white takes into d5, and then white has pressure on on the on the e file, and basically he will try to attack the e7 pawn. Uh, so this is a very this is a positional weakness for black, and that's what he's avoiding by giving this tactical check with knight c3. So knight c3, bishop into c3, b into c, b into c3, b into c3, rook into c3. Uh, then white starts going to the end game with rook e3, rook a c8, rook c3, and uh, black to queen into c3, queen into c3, rook into c3. Rook c1, take, take. So before this game was played, this position was considered to be equal. And uh, most of the games played in this position prior to this game were have ended in draws. And so as a result, black players used to think that entering this position was, was safe and uh, white really didn't have any more chances. Uh, or even if he had chances, uh, they were not too much. But the white player uh, did a study of his own, his own research on this position. And uh, in his home preparation, he had come up with, uh, with a plan on how to proceed in this end game, on, on how to push for an advantage and possibly a win in this end game. And that's what I really would like to study uh, in, in today's lesson. Um, so, uh, before we continue with the rest of the moves, um, I would like you guys to just think on, on what you would do as, as white and as well as black. Um, but, uh, mostly try to come up with white's plan, you know, like how you would like to proceed in general. You don't have to come up with exact moves, but, uh, but uh, but more of a high level strategical uh, uh, strategical assessment of how uh, how your play will proceed. Um, I guess we have a new student today. Uh, it's Manoj. Um, so just a few comments here, Manoj. Uh, the way we uh, do these lessons is that. It's, it's pretty interactive. We, we try to uh, analyze positions. Uh, mostly we uh, analyze some basic positions, foundational stuff. Today we are uh, uh, slightly di diverging from that, analyzing an entire game, but, but uh, uh, analyzing the end game part of that game. And uh, mostly it's, uh, I ask uh, the students to think on a position for a certain amount of time. The idea is that I want you guys to uh, think for yourselves, uh, make a judgment, and then we'll see how you, if, uh, how you fail on it. It's, it's very similar to how an actual maths class happens. You know, like, so I, I think chess is very similar to, uh, to, to maths uh, in the sense that you require a lot of calculations and uh, you cannot get better at maths just by reading maths, right? So you have to practice the problems yourselves. And I try to, uh, we try to uh, do, uh, take that same approach here. So we try to uh, solve uh, certain uh, tactical stuff or strategical stuff uh, in our lessons here. All right, so with that in mind, uh, how about you guys take like five minutes just to, just to ponder on this position. Um, as a disclaimer, the white player who played this position, who played this game, uh, spent uh, spent like few weeks on this position uh, uh, in coming up with the right plan for white. Uh, 
with the exact platform right so again the goal is not for for you guys to come up with the right answer but uh, more of a of a thinking exercise okay so let's start your time now 5 minutes
All right. Um, let's call the timeout. So how about this? Let's uh, let's do one thing. Let's uh, just go one by one and uh, try to try to hear your thoughts on uh, on how I should proceed in general. Okay, so let's uh, how about this. Let's uh, start with Adip. If that's good with him. Adip, are you there? I think um, I King moves to D two. Okay. Um, what do you think of the overall plan? You know, like so. What should White try to do? So, so King White, is, I think is a good move. But. So he's trying to promote one of his pawns. So, okay. so whatever the king tries to attack, or wherever the king is trying to move. I can move the other side, or I could just de defend one side. Okay. Uh, so like, because, enough. like, knowing the A and B file, there's one pawn and there's another pawn that can take out the pawn on um, black pawn on A7. Mm -hmm. So that's just one side the black king has to worry about, but then, I, but then he also has to protect this side because if he doesn't, then... The white can just win. So it's okay. actually pretty equal here, but it's really unequal here. So he has two. Well, it's more. Black has the advantage over here, but white has more of an advantage over here. So. Okay. So you mean king side and black side, queen side, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's hear from Sakash. Why don't you go, Sakash? Uh, Share your thoughts about this position with us. There. Okay. Um, how about let's go to Nippon. For white, it, I would move A4. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're uh, saying that white should play a4 here. Yeah. Okay, so that's I think an interesting idea um, about our new uh, new member of this lessons, Manoj. Uh, a4. Okay, uh, so in terms of strategy, what do you think uh, White should do? White's trying to, so White has two pawns on the left side of the board. He's trying to advance mm -hmm. one of the pawns. His black is only one side of the pawn. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to, he's trying to advance both those, he's trying to advance both. He's just trying to, he, he's, he's advanced, he wants to advance both of those pawns for one of them to promote a, one of them to promote a to queen. Okay. Queen. Fair enough. Um, so, okay, uh, I guess uh, uh, we agree that white has an advantage on the queen side. So for anyone who is not aware of, uh, of the chess terms, um, the left side of the board is called as the queen side, right? So this, for, from A to D files, that's called as the queen side because the queen is on the is on the D file and then the right side of the board is called as the king side. So I guess a very general observation is that black has a king side majority pawn majority and white has a queen side pawn majority. But it is white's turn to play. And white approaches uh, the play here uh, from uh, from here onwards in two phases. The first phase is that he first of all centralizes his king. Okay, so this is a king and pawn end game, and so the only piece that you really have to play here is the king. So really, you you want that piece to be as active as possible. 
An activity means uh, to have the flexibility to either go to the king, queen side or the king side. So as, as Adib said, you know, like uh, white can try to go to the left side or the, or the right side, depending on where black goes. So uh, that's the reason white first uh, centralizes his king. And the second is that as, as uh, most of you have observed is that white has a majority, born majority on the queen side. So he maximizes the impact of that. So first of all, he uh, he improves the position of his king, and then he he maxi he's, he's maximizing the advantage he has on the queen side. So let's start with that. So king c1, black plus king f8, king c2, king e8, king c3, king d7. B4, King C6, A4, E6, King G4, King B6. Okay. So White sort of finished uh, the first phase of his plan. The first phase was uh, centralizing his king, uh, maximizing his pawn majority on the queen side. So he's he's ready to uh, to make a pass pawn or make a big breakthrough with his two pawns. So say if the black king goes away from the queen side to, to the king side, say on the square g7, then his two pawns are ready to make a queen, right? So uh, that's what he's doing with his a and b pawns. He's, he's basically tying down the black king is basically tying down the black king on the queen side, on the left side of the board, if you will. So tying down the king on this side. Okay, so the king's mobility is sort of limited. Black king's mobility is limited. And now the next phase of his plan is, is trying to play on the king side. And that's what he continues with. So g4. As I said, black king is tied down on the queen side, so he's just waiting with king c7. g5. King b6. King c4. So, um, White's next few moves are just sort of waiting moves. And uh, there is a practical aspect uh, to White's next few moves. Uh, the thing is that uh, we have these time controls where, uh, you, uh, where, where each player is given two hours for the first 40 moves. And then uh, he gets another additional hour for the next 20 moves. And then another hour for another 20 moves. So because of the time control mechanism, White is just trying to pass on the moves so that he gets additional time to think on his, uh, to, uh, to think on how he, ex how he wants to execute his plan. And that's why the next few moves are just sort of waiting moves. This is the practical aspect of, uh, of, of playing chess, right? So uh, practically you, know, you have these considerations of how much time you want to gain, um, whether it's going to affect your opponent's psychology, uh, whether you uh, are putting pressure on him just to make him crack under the pressure, things like this. So we will not go too much into that because we want to confine uh, the study just to the academic part. But, uh, but I just want to explain why White is just waiting with this king. And as you can see, this is move number 33. Right, so this is move number 33. 32, and uh, that's why uh, White is just waiting for this king. So G5, king B6, king C4, E6, king D4, king C6, king C3, B6. So Black's king has no plan, so Black cannot do much. King C4, king C7, king D3. Another variation that black can do is, is he can try to create his own pass pawn with d5, but, but that would be a big mistake because then this would be a weakness, right? So take, take king d4, 
king d6, then f4. Then black has to play either king c6 or king c6 or king e6. If he plays king c6, I play king d4. And eventually, I now I just have, I grab your pawn. If you play king e6, then white sort of throws away his pawn. b5, take, take, king d6, then h3. King e6, b6. King d6, b7. King c7, so black has to stop the white pawn. Then white takes king d5, king b7, king d6. And now black cannot stop the white king from entering and taking black spawns. And then this, right? So white will win here. So there are a lot of variations in this position. So blacks, black really cannot play d5. And, uh, and that's another reason, uh, and that's another factor actually that uh, plays to white's advantage. So king c7, king d3. Um, so just a disclaimer, um, someone mentioned to me that it's it's 12 noon and uh, that's, uh, so if you have somewhere to go, feel free to drop out of the class. I will share the recording in any case uh, by the end of the day so you can watch it. But if you have time, then uh, let's just continue with this. So it's, it's, it's gonna take a few more minutes, uh, another five, 10 minutes. So let's just continue with that. Uh, feel free to draw a drop out if you want to, okay? Uh, so king c7, f4. King d3, okay, king c6. King c3, king b6. As you can see, because white played his pawn to g5, he has basically paralyzed these three pawns. So one pawn is paralyzing these three pawns. So let's just uh, draw something around that. Right, so these three pawns are paralyzed because of white's one pawn. So that's another advantageous factor that that, that white executed properly. So first he centralized his king, then two pawns, then paralyzed black's three pawns on the king's side. That's the second phase he executed. And now he's just waiting. D3, king c3, b6, king d4, king c6, king d3, king b6, King c4, king c7. Okay, so this is all just waiting tactics with, uh, uh, so that he he, uh, he gains time. So now uh, 40 moves are over. He gets another one hour on the clock and he starts uh, making some additional progress, f4. King b6, king d4, king c6, king e3. King b6. Now white's king is ideally placed for the breakthrough he wants to achieve, f5. The reason is that if, if black takes, 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 then I play king f4. I d5, then I take king into f5. And uh, if d4, king e4, so I'm able to control black's pawn. And if black just continues with this king to c6, then king takes f5. And again, he does the same plan. Now he wants to come back and take black's d6 pawn. King c king into f5, d5. Sorry, d5. Uh, new variation, then king e5, white runs, right? As we have seen earlier. If king d5, what do you think what you do? Let's b5, takes, takes, king c5, king e4, king 
king b5, king d5. And again, uh, the idea is that white will take the pawn on d6 and then just continue on to hunting black's pawns. And the same thing as before, black can't do anything about it. Yeah, black can't do anything about it. Well. So f5, so black cannot really take on this. So all he does, all he has to do is that he can wait. So king c6. Okay, uh, actually in the game he played a5. Okay, so this is a new main line. And the reason is that, so king c6, uh, white will continue with f6, king b6, king d4. See, I mean, black is parallel, so all he has is out uh, of the king moves. King c6, uh, king c4, king b6, check. King c6, and now white plus h3. Now black has to go back. Now we cannot just uh, stay on b6. Now we just cannot stay on b6 and c6. So he goes back, then b5. Takes, takes, king b7, a6. King a7, king c6. And again white wins. Take, go, 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 and then queen your pawn. Right. So it's, it's a pretty slow death for black. And the reason, again, is that because white proceeded with this queen side expansion that paralyzed his three pawns. So white is basically having a free reign to do whatever he wants. So uh, f5, king c6 was not played because white has this plan, so black gets a bit desperate and plays a5 on his own. b5, king c5. So black's reasoning is that at least he will control the fifth rank. Instead of white coming to fifth rank, you know, like pushing his king back to b7, c7, at least he will play king b6, king c5. So that's his reasoning. h4. Sorry, king c5, first he plays f6. So white continues with his plan. King b6. King f3, king c5, king g4, king b6, h3, king c5, h4. So again, the uh, the reason why it, uh, did this in two steps is just to get additional time. h4, king b6, h5, king c5, h6. So it seems that white has just locked in the position and black, and, and it seems like it's headed to a draw because black has a good blockade with king b6, king c5. But, uh, but white did get to advance his pawns pretty high enough, right? So, so his, his, uh, his pawns are pretty, uh, have uh, are advanced pretty high. So that's something. Now he goes back. So at six, king b6. Now he tries to break through. King f4, king c5, king e3, king b6, king g4. Okay, now no more king c5, king b7. Now he breaks through. e5. Black plus d5. This is a protected pass draw. King c5, king c7, b6, king b7, king d6. And this was white's plan all along. First, he wanted to advance his pawns high enough so that they are close to their queening squares, and then he wants to break to his king. Now, your question is, yeah, obviously, can black queen is pawn because you can push it. And that's what black did. But the irony of this position is that even though black queens his pawn first, because white's pawns are so advanced, he really can't do much to 
stop white queening from himself. So let's look at this, king e7, d3, king into f7, d2, king g8, d1, queen, f7. And black cannot really stop white from queening his pawn. So it, took, it takes queen into a4, queen. Queen b3, actually black played queen d7 to protect his pawn on h7. And what did white do now? Can anyone guess? Queen g7. So here there are two lines. Uh, black played king c6, but say if it takes, uh, what will white play? Anyone's guess? White to play. He'll take with the pawn. He'll take with the pawn. a4, king takes at 7 a3, queen, pawn. And then I stop its queen. All right. Wins. So queen into g7 really doesn't work. So king c6. Queen takes d7. King takes d7. King into h7. a4. Okay, for some reason, ah, okay, he plays b7 because he wants to queen with a check. King c7, king into g6, a3, h7, a2, queen, takes, queen check, and he wins. So, um, I see that no one has yet dropped out so i can sense that you guys found this position interesting um what are your thoughts pretty dense game right i mean so as you can see that uh white's planning was really really dense it was pretty intense and uh, it involved uh, it involved variations where you uh, you had to make queens a few times. You know, like you make queen, the other side make queens, they get exchanged. You go back, you capture pawn, then uh, other side again queens. But at the end of all these variations, uh, it is white who came on top. And uh, th this is one of the positions I studied many years ago, many, many years ago, like, like about 15, 14 years ago when I was first uh, coming up uh as a as a as a junior and i really found this uh example to be very impressionable it also highlighted the importance of in-game thinking right so i mean uh usually players uh think that in games are drawn they are equal they are boring but actually the uh many of your opening decisions are affected uh Due to uh, certain end game, certain uh, certain end game results, so uh, that's the reason we we study end games and uh, we study calculation in our lessons here. Um, on 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 a different matter, you know, like uh, speaking to this position, uh, uh, starting from King C one uh it it took a lot of time for the white player to come up with these original ideas it, it took a uh, it took a lot of analysis and uh, there is a lot of analysis to be done in this end game uh, but uh, that would be a little bit scope out of one single lesson i mean ideally tweet will take like about 10 to 12 lessons just to go through this end game and i don't think we we we, uh, we just want to uh, analyze one position for eternity but uh, we can at least uh, gain some insight, some good insight and some good understanding of how in-game planning can work. 
especially the part where white uh, white tied down black's king on the queen side and then proceeded on to advance his own pawns on the queen's uh, on on the king's side and then once he fixed that he again came back and did a breakthrough in the center went to this king so uh, i found that to be very impressionable and very instructive and uh, as you will see moving forward we'll, we'll be exploring all these ideas but the foundation of uh, of uh, of working with these ideas is calculation and uh, and doing the end games uh, some of you well, one of you was trying to say something was it nipun or adi Uh, any thoughts, any words about this position, about this first lesson? All right, so I understand uh, I'm a little bit out of time, so I'm gonna stop here because I understand you guys have a lot more 